Alright, welcome ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls to the broadcast, the Star Ladder I-League Star Series American Region tiebreaker match coming at you. We have one game, yes, you heard me right, a best of one series to determine which of these two teams is going to be going to Shanghai to compete in the main event later this month for that massive prize pool here. So really excited to be here. Definitely didn't even know that this was going to be happening until really late last night, obviously with the circumstances set up. We'll get to that in just a moment, but plenty to talk about. The draft already underway, but first got to introduce my co-caster, of course. First got to introduce myself. I don't think I mentioned that. I'm Breaky CPK, <laughs> and I'm going to be joined by the one, the only Z-Rock. How's it going, man? Hey, everybody. Hope you're all doing well. Yeah, a very, very interesting scenario that led us here. Basically, both teams got tied in the groups, and they split head-to-head. -head. So, here we are. Yeah, so, okay, so real quickly on that before we talk too much about the draft. Again, yesterday, it literally came down to the final match yesterday, Complexity versus NP. If NP won 2 nothing, they would be the team going. However, in fact, they even won the first game. However, Complexity playing the spoilers, a lot of people are like, oh, they're not even going to try, whatever, they don't care. They tried. <laughs> they won that game, too, actually, in about 20 minutes against a team that was on the verge of going to the main event, thus creating this best-of-one tiebreaker here. So, hey, I got to say, as a, as a spectator, as a caster, I'm excited, obviously, that we get this opportunity. But, man, the pressure must be on these two teams, knowing what's on the yeah, line here. There's always something on the line, right, especially for Swindle. That guy loves winning Yeah, <laughs> to the point that there doesn't need to be anything else. Exactly. But... Very interesting way with the way the groups fell, actually. Digital Chaos and MP each split one series other than the one with each other, and both of them were to complexity. Yep. So other than that, they swept out the group, and now we're down to this best-of-one sudden-death game to decide who's going to move on. And from the picks here, NP's already just making some interesting first picks. Digital Chaos is opening Lone Druid, something we've seen numerous times. It's very strong, just an incredibly strong power pick right now. But NP going with this Coddle Brew opening, it's a ton of control. It's a ton of uh, map movement with that Coddle ult, being able to pull people around. It's not a meta opening necessarily, but it is a really interesting open. Yeah, you know, best of one series. We don't get these too often, especially with such a significant thing on the line, but that's where you got to wonder what the mindset is of these teams when it comes to the strategy, and are they going to bust out maybe some different things that perhaps we don't get to see a whole lot, and I feel like that's what we're kind of seeing a little bit here from Team NP, at least. You know, you got Lone Druid on the side of DC, no surprise necessarily, that now paired up with Silencer, but yeah, the Coddle into Brewmaster, that's going to be curious to see what kind of plan they have up their sleeve. I, in fact, I'll I'll look at Dota buff here in a second, but I don't know if they have uh, a lot of history recently playing uh, the Brewmaster. Here. Did, where should we expect to see the Brewmaster, you would think? I would guess we're going to see it in the mid lane. Uh, there's a small chance. I saw one game where someone ran it as a roaming four, and all he did was throw the, uh, the Drunken Haze on people because <laughs> it's a pretty high uptime. It's an easy way to make them miss a lot of CS. You can kind of give a lane an edge advantage. But the problem is, if he doesn't get levels, he doesn't get six early. If he doesn't get Five six early, he's just not really a Dota hero right now. Mm -hmm. So he's got a set of problems they're going to have to work around. But NP may be thinking a little out of the box here Radiant because DC team. did just finish a series. They just lost in a pretty big upset to That's wanted true. in DAC. So they are a little more warmed up. They've played some games just now, but they are coming off of a loss. So DC has to mentally reset, realize this is a new game, a new series. Um, and, and really come in strong. So maybe NP's just trying to throw him for a loop. That, that's actually a really good point. I'm glad you brought that up because I meant to as well. But yeah, the, DC, talk about that. I mean, they're coming off a definitely was an upset. They're losing a team wanted, who's obviously that new wild card team on the American region. P, uh, Peter Pan Dam and crew over there putting that team together. And their debut, they take out Digital Chaos in another qualifying event. Of course, the uh, Dota 2 Asian Championship. So yeah, NP trying to maybe capitalize here. I think the exact break you quote was, it's not going to be a serious team. <laughs> I, I may have said something along those lines initially. <laughs> hey, I still think that's the case, right? Like, it's not like they're grinding practicing by any they means. They are. They, they've been doing three-a-day scrims since that team got formed for the most part. Yeah. They've been scrimming a ton. But, okay. but coming in now, DC, they're, they've been around long enough. They did extremely well at TI. They've got the mental fortitude to reset. They should be just fine coming into this as a fresh game. Yeah. And the silencer opening pick here is huge against Brewmaster. The Brewmaster ult is an extremely long cast, which 
makes it a little hard to get off, especially against the silencer, that all he has to do is press R. So he can lock Brew out of that ult when he wants the ult, BKB or not, and uh, really kind of put some pressure on him there and, and mitigate a lot of the advantages of that hero. Great point there, and I was actually looking at, sure enough, the Dota buff stats here, and according to Dota buff at least, Brewmaster has not been ran by Team NP, uh, at least in the last month and a half or so, which is, of course, pretty relevant, you know, with the patch and everything. I don't know well, well before that, but as within the last month or so, they have not ran Brew Brewmaster. So, again, this is definitely something different from them, and intrigued to see how they Radiant necessarily do it here. It sounds like that it could be a, one of several options I've seen, even seen in the offlane. You're mentioning perhaps mid, even a four roll. For, so it's definitely a hero that could uh, kind of fit in different style roles. And I kind of wonder if that silencer pick that you're getting at may change the mindset in I how NP wants to run the Brewmaster. It may, but I think when you go a Coddle Brewmaster opening like this, a Keeper Brew opening, you have a plan in mind, and you're going to try to execute your plan. Uh, when we see Keeper of the Light picked up, it is usually early on in a draft, and kind of with a set-piece draft formula in mind, uh, it's pretty hard to pivot off of that, because Coddle lends itself very well to very specific lane matchups. Yeah. Stuff like Tiny is very good where you can keep the Tiny chakra. Uh, you can mana leak Five somebody so they can't run away and then Tiny gets a nice little full combo on them and blows them up. There's a lot of things you can do with this Tiny. You can use it as a four roll. You can pull mid with it by throwing creep camps over. Uh, you can pull pretty much any lane at this point actually by just dragging your creep over and then throwing it at the creep wave. So a lot of utility you can get out of it if you do run it as a support. Uh, we could also see it paired with something like a Wisp and then you run it as a carry tiny. So options there left on the table. DC with the bounty hunter though. This pick has risen and fallen in favor in the recent patches so many times mm -hmm. that I don't know what to think of it anymore. Yeah, I, you know, he's one of these heroes that, again, I really thought that we were maybe going to start seeing him explode to an extent as far as the post-patch 7.0, you know, with the whole new bounty rune system, hence the bounty hunter name, of course. You'd, you'd be able to benefit off of the being able to control the bounty bounty runes and being a very roam heavy, but we really haven't seen him a whole lot. And that's not to say that he's not necessarily that great. It's just teams haven't been using him for whatever reason. Perhaps they just feel like well, it's not comfortable, but... It's a little bit surprising, but part of it is the fact that we are in a very roaming heavy meta, but the roamers that are doing it well right now have stuns. Bounty isn't getting as much value by just running mid and hitting them a couple times with an Orb of Venom and trying to win your mid laner the lane. And the one interesting thing I've always thought about Bounty Hunter is he doesn't offer a lot of flexibility, right? The biggest yeah. thing he offers is vision, deep vision, getting wards up in spots you maybe couldn't before, uh, really just Easy seeing the map. But in team fights, his versatility tends to come from the items he picks up through track. So that does make him very versatile. You can go mech on him, you can go force staff, uh, you can go orchid. I've seen that before. <laughs> There's uh, blink builds. There's so many different ways you can go because you have more gold than a traditional support. And your versatility has to almost come through Five items. Seconds remaining. Interesting couple of pickups there. The Invoker Radiant coming out for Team NP, back. and then a Digital Chaos going with the Quap response of the Queen of Pain. But also with that Invoker pick, I mean, it's kind of it's making things a little more clear, at least in my mind. Probably, so that probably mm -hmm. means we see Brewmaster offlane, a tiny so, yeah. short, and then Invoker in that Ten mid. I actually think we're going to see, I think we might see Carry Tiny here. Or, uh, sorry. Um, Five yeah, remaining. I think we have a chance of yeah. seeing Carry Tiny if the Wisp comes out. If they don't pick Wisp, it's probably going to be a 4 roll Tiny. Digital Chaos, okay. though, they're in desperate need of finding some control. They have no reliable stuns right now. Shuriken Toss is the only reliable TP break, and then Lone Druid's Roar, which is a little scary to use as a TP DC's break. But they need to find some stuns, they need to find some control, and leaving their offlane pick more than likely for last does let them do that. The one premium hero that slipped all the way through this draft is Slarter. Wow, yeah. So, <laughs> something very possible for them to pick up here, and it's being fed to them on a Ten silver platter. Uh, there's not a lot of other really great offlaners here. Sand King may come out, still a viable Five option. Uh, but I think that's the most obvious pickup for them. It pairs really well with the Lone Druid and just giving something that can peel Five off of him. And I think it's by far the cleanest pick for them right here. Maybe yeah. they could see the Beastmaster. I know they've ran that a number of times. Um, maybe Batrider, but I don't like that nearly as much. Yeah. No, Slaughter, he, he is a premium for sure, and there's no reason why he wouldn't be a solid choice here as he brings that very good initiation stun as you're getting at, of course, uh, that they definitely are lacking right now. So they're going to have to choose pretty quickly. They don't only have three seconds, seconds of reserve time here. They used plenty throughout the bands in the initial picks here, so a couple of... Wow. Okay, yeah. They, yeah, no, no surprise really in the end. So are they going to go Wisp? Where do they go here? Let's see. 
So if you're NP, you need to find something that can either get on the lone druid or punch a lot of damage through safely. I think they could. What I would like to see actually would be a carry sniper. Uh, a little bit strange, a little bit off meta slightly, Ten but it does a ton minutes. of damage from the back lines. You've got some good tanky frontliners and brew and tiny later on, and remain. you have so much damage if Invoker just alacrities a sniper in the back lines. He really can just Result punch time. out so many shots quickly, dealing damage with headshot and. I would like to see something like that. I think we might be more likely to kind of see a more meta, like meta carry. We could see Slark, we could see Sven. Uh, Jug is still in the pool as well. Very common pick. So yeah, you're you're still you're stuck up on this uh, on this four rolled tiny. I, I I have not seen it myself. I mean, not, not that I'm doubting you, but really tiny in a four rolls. Is that really the most powerful way to use him though? Is that like a good reason to pick him up? Well, if you throw a creep into the creep wave, you start leveling extremely fast. So there, you can start pulling camps yeah. that no one else can pull other than Pudge. And so if you're doing that, then you get a quick level 2, level 3, then your combo's online really fast. And from that point on, you can just run around ganking. Yeah, um, it, It's not a bad thing to do, and I think that's where we're going to see it. Carry Tiny's kind of fallen from grace a little bit. Uh, the Aghanim's sieging idea isn't really as strong as it was. Uh, teams are holding a lot better now. And in five mans, he just doesn't really offer a ton, right? He throws a stun combo out, and then he's pretty much done. He right-clicks a couple things. And it's pretty hard to get right-clicks off as a slow base attack time right-clicking melee hero. <laughs> okay, NP's draft. I Again, <laughs> we are seeing the definition of just let's do something radical in game number one of a best of one series against a very good team in digital chaos that's exactly what mp's mindset is here We're, oh i'm if, baffled if mp gets ahead in tempo this game is going to get super scary how fast they can take a tower with a brew tiny invoker troll is not to be understated when troll ults and you have invoker alacrity and you throw it all on tiny even as a support tiny or on the troll himself like you're going to just melt towers they're going to fall in a matter of seconds and so the uh, dc really needs to be careful to make sure they don't give away too much in laning phase not give away unnecessary deaths on the off lane uh not let bounty get caught Ten too many times remaining. they got to be a little careful and rein it in they can't be sloppy with their play in the early game or this game Five could run away from them remaining here we go. About to start our only game of the series once again. Digital Chaos versus NP here. Best of one. Winner goes to Shanghai. Loser is complete here at the qualifying stage. So Troll Warlord to finish it off. And we're going to start on a pause, of course. But, man, I'm excited to finally be here at this point. We've even had those delays to kick it off here. But finally going to get right into it here. So, yeah, the early aggression, though, of NP, that seems to be where their, their bread and butter is most certainly going to be as you're getting yeah. at. Well, while we have a pause, if you want to run through the lineups, you could. I could. Do I want to? Not real. No, just kidding. <laughs> All right. So, okay. Fine. Uh, we got okay. We got Troll Warlord being played by the one and only Eternal Envy. Actually, wait, what? Okay. So switch it up a little bit. Yeah. Okay. So Eternal Envy on the Troll Warlord, MSS on the Tiny, Rose on the Brewmaster, Owie 2000 on the Evoker, and SVG on the Coddle. On the other side, Misery on Bounty Hunter, Sox on Silencer, Resolution on Lone Druid. We got Quap being played by Wii, and then, of course, Slaughter on the Moon, or Moon Meander on the Slaughter. That's what I meant to say. Um, That's why I wanted to run through the lineups. Yeah. MSS is NP's offlaner. He's on Tiny, not Brew. Yeah, there's, what is going on? I, I'm just... I don't know. Uh -huh. I don't get it. So I, I don't think we're going to see traditional roles like we've spelled out in so many games in the past. They are going so far off meta here, they're, they're playing their own game. I think this is going to be a fine gold where we can find it. Okay, they're trolling. They swapped. <laughs> <sighs> Damn. <laughs> I mean, you, why do you do this to me, my friend? <laughs> No, that okay. I, I shouldn't say Dan because honestly, I'm I'm glad that it's more like that because that was just getting like, wait, what's <laughs> going on? Like internal Envy's, you know, the e -E invoker. I mean, why is he not playing his invoker? What? Yeah, no, that's this makes a lot a lot more sense for the heroes that we have at least. They just wanted to mess with us a little bit. Yeah, but well, it worked. It did. It was great. Tactical pause just to bait the casters. Fun times. Okay, so to start, they're gonna just uh. Gather up here at the top bounty room. Look at this bounty hunter doing his thing. It's going to scout things out, Misery. We'll see. Do they have any kind of sentry on them? It doesn't SPG look like it. has one on him. Oh, does he? Okay, yeah, he does. And, and they, they do have dust. Mm -hmm. 30 as well. seconds to battle. 
So Bounty Hunter needs to be careful not to go too deep right here. Going to place a look at that. All the pings coming out. They saw him in split second. We'll see if they're able to counter this now. Yeah, Misery, uh, even if he just wastes a bunch of their time here, is pretty happy with it. Like, people have to go block waves and, and everything like that. But if, if NP does get vision up on this hill, is there any way for them to do it? Not really. There's no way for them to actually de word that word with where they place that sentry. That's a good point. <laughs> so they definitely are taking care of it, but uh, yeah, they thought it was going to be blocked. Oh, the dust comes out actually, and now Bounty Hunter, he's regretting this rolls, tosses him back in. And I don't see Misery getting out of this. You see the thunderclap used from Brewmaster. Maybe he is going to get out of it actually. Another toss. There we go, one on attack. Yes, Ooh. there's the first blood. Eternal Emmy gets it. The Shadow Walk not in time right there. So this sentry was placed down way before anything happened. Like zero, like 60 seconds left before the game. It actually got them that kill. BH would have faded away on that last auto and gotten out. And extremely good forethought in getting that sentry down early. Good point. Yeah, no, I thought he actually was going to Yeah, it didn't ending the last auto check was going to go off, but that would be why. So that uh, <laughs> works out. And now Eternal Envy, he is playing the Invoker, and he actually gets the first blood in the end. So, again, fantastic start for NP. And looking at overall the lanes and how we're setting up right here. So I'm intrigued to see how this Tiny does. He's doing the pull here early on in this middle lane, but this is setting up for an awkward situation for Invoker now. He's pulling it back, and now Wee's kind of going on over, realizing what's happening. He's going to be joined by Bounty Hunter. It's going to be some mind games going on here, and actually Rose, he might be in some trouble even. He does have a toss. He's going to have to use it here shortly. That's not going to even happen, though. Misery picks up the kill. Yeah, very heads-up play from Wee there to actually go commit on that Tiny. Tiny's very, very vulnerable early on. He has zero base armor, so every auto you do does true damage to him. And he committed so much of his mana pool to toss the creep in the first place that he didn't have a toss right away. So, good little punish there from DC, keeping them in this game in the early stages. This is the more common Tiny pull right here. Okay. The one he's doing right here is so much safer, and you're pulling a hard camp instead of a medium camp. So you clear out a bit more of the creep wave. Gotcha. So a lot more standard here out of him. The first one was kind of greedy just to try to give E an edge. Oh my god, Moomiander's going pretty ballsy right here. He throws out the crush. He's getting low himself. SPG though with the turn kill. Misery coming in, but Coddle's pretty fast, remember. He runs that nice base movement speed, but not enough. Misery chases him down, but it comes at a cost. And make it a two for one. Definitely favoring NP in that exchange right there. They uh, got a little too overconfident at the bottom lane. Yeah, anytime you're giving Howie kills and farm like this, it's just insanely good for them. It's speeding up that tempo that they need. So many of their heroes need to get to an item or a level timing. Troll needs one or two items to really do damage. Invoker wants a Midas and a bunch of levels. And the biggest thing is your Brewmaster in the offlane needs to find level 6. So, that's what they're going to be looking for. But Rose here is getting so much out of this jungle. Look, what, look at what pulling does. He's level 3. He's higher level than MSSR. <laughs> Gonna do a nice shrine use right here with MSS on that Brewmaster. So nice teamwork as well. And yeah, it, it, obviously they practice this. It's safe to say you don't you don't run a strategy like this without having practiced it quite a bit, as odd as it may be. Misery, of course, he knows there's a Sentry nearby taking these auto attacks. Just gonna walk it off though, and he will survive. But uh, some good pressure. And yeah, here at the three minute, more respawns and Rose is back at it. So. He's going to soon be level 4 and continue his progression right here. I, 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 is it a safe assumption that we're still just going to be see the traditional, you know, get, get that Blink Dagger ASAP? More than likely. We're probably going to see Tranquil Boots or Arcanes into, into Blink. So he's going to have to do something a little more aggressive here at some point, though. Pulling this is great. It's giving MSS some extra experience. But there's only so long you can play the game 4v5, right? Mm -hmm. At a certain point, you need 5 heroes. So... They're getting what they can out of this in the early game. Misery's trying to counter the fact that Tiny's not in the lanes by being somewhere all the time hitting stuff and scouting less. But, I mean, he's been caught twice. That's not really the start you want to have as a bounty. Yeah, he's game playing pretty aggressive down here, but he finally TPs it to the top lane, and look at who he's rotating on. On that Brewmaster, level 3 currently has a level 2 Thunderclap, as well as a point to the Drunken Brawler right here for the... Uh, uh, the dodge chance and whatnot, but uh, he is going to start walking away, actually. As soon as Misery starts to mix... Oh, that's because he's going for the Bounty Rune, which he picks oh, up. Speak. But there's the Arcane Curse, and now here comes the follow-up. Can Lundra get in here? Quops here, actually. That should be enough. No chance for him. Down goes the Lundra. Yeah, it's unfortunate. One minor thing that I wish more players would do, and we're, we're seeing this even at the pro level, when you're going to die like that, he had zero way out and zero counterplay, use your mana. You get it all back when you res anyway. Thunderclap's a short cooldown. 
at the very least, you would have done an extra 100 damage to Wee and could have put a little pressure on him. Envy, though. Yeah, Envy's in trouble. Dead trouble, in fact. He just collapsed yeah. onto him. He made a minor mistake and accidentally re-invoked Cold Snap instead of Ghost Walk, so it took him an extra second to smash the buttons out mm. and uh, couldn't Ghost Walk in time. So, a little unfortunate there, misplay leading to his death, but when we look at the last hits here, it's so even. The Lone Druid and the and Owie are so close to each other, they're within one. Mid lane's within one. That This, this game is incredibly close already. That's what I would hope for. That's what you'd expect, right? These two great teams going at it. Best of one. The winner takes all type of deal. So, wouldn't expect anything less. Coddle again going to have to deal with his bounty hunter sitting on top and putting the auto attacks and no mana leak uh, just yet. So, uh, not going to be able to try to harass bounty hunter with the likes of that ability. And instead, Troll Warler will come on over and take advantage of the full camp with Coddle. Might as well finish off the farm quite a bit. He is level 6 now, has those face boots, and yeah, he is second just behind that Lone Druid in farm. Meanwhile, Bounty Hunter is caught now. Rose does have a toss, going to chuck him right back into his teammate, and Misery not going to work in terms of getting away. They do have the follow-up damage, and there's the kill. So Rose, he is having a great start, really, for his team as well, yeah. playing this 4 roll. He really is. It's a little unfortunate they couldn't feed these Radiant two kills over to Owie on the Bounty. Attack. The first one got taken by Coddle Blast, that last one got taken by a Tiny Auto. But you are just happy to get him in the end. And uh, we, or Owie's still having a pretty nice time down here. Just free farming away. I was going to say, Troll Warlord, should we expect to see the Helm of the Dominator? It looks like that's what Owie's going for, of course. It's just such a traditional item, really, on, you know, many carries in general. So <laughs> Anybody. Yeah. Not uh, surprised here. See that? Eternal Envy might be in trouble again, however. They're setting this up. For, for uh, DC is paying off huge because they're going to see every rotation coming in and they can make a more informed choice if they want to dive or not. Mm -hmm. And now that they're seeing two heroes here, I, I doubt they're going to do anything here. Yeah, Moon's just falling back bottom. Yeah, we're behind the tower. Definitely plenty of information to work with. So not going to go in. Misery and Stag going to check out what's going on over here. And yeah, going to run into Brewmaster, but I don't know if they're going to be able to make a play. Of course, pretty tanky, pretty difficult. This top tower did take some... A little bit of damage, not too much though, but obviously Lundra does have pretty free farm. There's the curse coming out, but again, not wanting to really dive him, being as beefy as he is. He's not level 6 just yet though, so don't have to worry about the primal split at this time, but there's a porter from Coddle. And Misery, okay, yeah, they're going to go, and out comes the uh, Sonic Wave and an easy kill on a Coddle right there. Brewmaster TP away. At least he will. Never mind, he gets feared. There's a stopper. One of the stoppers you talked about earlier, and Thunderclap ain't going to help him here. That's going to be a double kill for Wii on the co-op. Yeah, nice little rotation from them. Again, the first Sonic Wave paying off huge. They get one kill off that and another kill off the back. So, nice little start here for DC. They are substantially up in gold, but down a little bit in XP just because of the pulling that Tiny's done versus running around like Misery's been having to do. So they've generated a little more experience into the map. Uh, and they just need to get to six. Their early game is a little bit rougher than DC's. They've got Primal Split coming up here very shortly. Uh, Eternal Envy is getting it about halfway to that Midas. So they really just want to slow the game down right now and until they hit those first timings, and then they need to explode out of the gate. Speaking of Brewmaster here, MSS playing again, not a typical hero. We've been seeing a little bit of pop in here and there lately, but... What kind of build should we expect on him? Does he get maybe that blink dagger for some initiation follow-up, or, or what's the deal? There's kind of two routes you can go with that. That would be the most expected one. The other one I've seen some people go is they go like an arcane boots into like a drum type build where they run at you a little bit more. Um, I did see it was some Euro game where he went basically drums echo saber and just basically because he's not really going to get split off very often in this game, right? Yeah. And it's going to be incredibly hard for him to use that skill effectively. So I'm not really sure if he'll deviate from the normal build path or if he will just go something standard like Blink. I would assume it's going to be Blink. Yeah. Such a good tool that following up with the uh, Tiny Initiation, of course, could do wonders for the team. So yeah, we'll keep an eye on that build and what he decides to go for. He's at the hand of Midas on Invoker. Yeah, it's coming along. 1,300 gold currently saved up. So definitely get in there. Co-op, though, keeping the pressure up. On to Eternal Lemmy here in the middle lane. Does have about a 600 net worth lead over him. The it's kill actually assisting. crazy when you look at the CS how much Moon has been able to keep up. Moon is actually ahead of his mid laner right now in CS. Wow. Just because of the pressure that's been brought onto mid and, and the amount of rotations that have come in. And this is going to put him in an exceptionally fast blink. He's only 900 gold away at 9 minutes. So 
could look to see that around the uh, the twelve ish minute mark, and with that, DC's lineup just opens up. All of a sudden, your instant blink stun is there, and you can start taking team fights instead of these little skirmishes. Mm -hmm. Troll, of course, does have the helm of the Dominator finished, using the Dark Troll Summoner with him, one of his brothers. Going to continue farming in the jungle quite a bit, but uh, we'll see if maybe some uh, grouping up and some, some pushing. Of course, Team Fight Presence talking about the Troll Warlord with that ultimate, especially the Battle Trance. Well, that could definitely make they can make use of that if a team fight does break out. But of course, there's some key items that they're most certainly waiting for. Uh, a couple that come to mind and talk about the blink dagger, especially middle lane initiation on a Wii. There's a stun follow up from Tiny. The EMP comes out. Is it enough follow up damage though? The answer is no. And Quap does blink away in time. So yeah, just simply not enough damage right there. Yeah, very close. Just didn't quite get there. They're going to be a little sad they committed quite a bit to that. That's Tiny's entire mana pool now, and he doesn't have the Arcanes yet. So probably going to use the Shrine here in the top lane, uh, since it doesn't look like he's going back. As we running in, rotating towards the bottom lane. Coddle. Ooh, he's going to get a ward down, but yeah, he's pretty far pushed up right there. He, he stayed up there a little bit longer. That could have been trouble. They will get the net on a Bounty Hunter, but it's the poor coming in. In fact, it is Quap. He does have that Sonic Wave ready to go. Not going to use it, however. Global Silence was used, actually, by Silencer, and I'm guessing it was for the bottom lane, but mm -hmm. choose not to go. Yeah, it, it was a little bit defensive. They were a little worried if Bounty got hit by a Bash, he would just die there instantly, and it was going to give them a way to turn it. Moonmander was very close to getting in stun range. Dyer's if he had gotten that stun off, Quap throws deal, and then they get trolled for sure, but just couldn't quite connect with it, so... He's not looking to be too aggressive on the starter right now, being this close to Blink Dagger. Caught there, Silencer, the primal split being used by Brewmaster, and just runs him down, basically. Nothing that Silencer can do by himself. Didn't really have the team support. And actually, yeah, Brewmaster catching Lone Dude over here with one of his uh, elements, but no follow-up. That'll be the end of that chance. Yeah, this is one thing that we get to see, and I'm really excited to watch this as the game goes on. MSS in these early game primal splits is it did a very good job of splitting the Brulings up to so many different directions. He sent that Spirit one straight into the jungle, found LD at the very end of it and threw him up in the air, wasting, you know, eight seconds of his time. And that micro is is what you really need to make this hero viable right now. Mm -hmm. Or as close to viable as you can, at least. One thing I am noticing on the side of DC that's definitely a, feels like a bit of a negative is that Misery here, only level five, and he actually just hit level five. Of course, you want to get that level six, get that track. Really uh, kind of kicking in, but unable to do that just yet. Is that uh, is that surprising? He'll be level, he'll be level six right now. Level uh, twelve minutes is roughly the the timing I would expect for most bounty hunters. Okay. He's got the tome of knowledge flying in, which is going to pop him to six instantly. Okay. So it's kind of what you've one of the reasons roaming meta came to be was tome of knowledge because you can have somebody be under leveled and as soon as ten minutes hit, you buy the tome, you pop them up. It's a it's a full level Radiance up until six, and a level six it's like five sixth of a level. So gotcha. It kind of recovers the experience they miss in lanes and lets them pressure a little harder. So chasing down sentries put down. They see him for a split second. Dust comes out. Rose he wants to go in. He's gonna take a fear though. Push backwards and you see Coddle that illuminate. Gonna push them back if they were interested in chasing, and instead they'll go for that middle tower. Of course, Lone Druid level 11, so it does have that plus 200 attack range talent right there. See SVG as the track is put on him in the background. All five are gathered here, though, for DC. Moomeander does have that blink dagger, remember, we're talking about. Tornado goes through, nice EMP. Not gonna yeah, hit other than the beer. That should stop the push for the most part. Yeah, he's not interested right now. In fact, they're pinging Misery after the time of Mumia and it wants to go in tracks, put up Anaconda right there. But the poor man's Blink Dagger right there used from Tiny in the in the background as he chucks in Brewmaster. Global Silence still stalling for now. Tower goes down. Misery, another toss in. One more auto attack should do it. Yes, they do get the kill on a Bounty Hunter. And in the background, Troll Warlord actually. He's trying to make a cutoff here on a Lone Druid and they throw him in the air with Brewmaster. Rock Chuck, there we go, another toss again, Eternal Levy in the midst of this, he's trying to get that team support, Tornado goes through, really being lifted and controlled every which way, and Resolution cannot run away in the end, and it's a two for nothing, so they just kept on chasing, and ended up working for NP, and here comes the Shrine use. Yeah, they, I mean, they went before they needed to, Weeha was Shrining, he was just falling back, he's going to pop the Shrine, come back in with enough mana to fire off one salvo of spells, and Moon hit the go button. I mean, it seemed incredibly preemptive to go without your main source of damage right now there. 
Yeah, I was wondering about that too, because yeah, as you were talking about, it, while that fight was kind of breaking out, he, he was falling back, and then all of a sudden, Mumi and her decided now's the time. So just the lack of communication, maybe felt they could have got a quick kill with the track, and then gotten out, but clearly not the case. And NP ready to respond. So definitely a little bit of a misstep there from DC. NP capitalizes, and now they're grouped up. Battle transfer to the Go Patrol Warlord. Going to be pushing out this middle lane, it seems like. And Troll has something to be delivered. What is it? It's the Asha. This is going to start to hurt. Good fourth, though. Slows it down a lot. It was while the Alacrity and Battle Transfer running. They stacked those two up. So good fourth there. Should save the tower. Now, the one thing that it's really hard, if you don't kill NP in your initial wave of spells, NP has so many ways to make you miss that you're probably not going to right-click anything. You have Blinding Light from Keeper of the Light, you have Whirling Axes from Troll, you have Drunken Haze from Brewmaster. You, you're just never going to connect with an auto attack. That's a good point, Definitely. yeah. This is a heavy miss lineup. That's not something you usually see, but... Oh, and you got uh, those trio of heroes combined. Uh, perhaps that's one of the mentalities that MP was going with. With that, I mean, they are going up against a Lone Druid, so I kind of wonder... Yeah, it's if a huge was... part of the strategy, yeah. because a Lone Druid doesn't want to build MKB at best he's going to be building it third after maelstrom dragonlance or or even mjolnir dragonlance and if he, if he does do that he's very squishy because the usual follow-up to that is scotty so it, they're forcing this this lone druid into a really awkward predicament with his items and he's gonna have to make a really tough choice in about 10 15 minutes here blink dagger 1200 gold saved up for tiny so he's working on it but still a a bit off eternal heavy bottom lane they put some pressure onto him now comes the corrosive haze but He'll be fine. As yeah, uh, kind of walking off for now. Or by fine, I mean he might be still in a lot of trouble, actually. Quap coming in, Sonic Wave, good to go. Going to use it right there, and yes, that's the kill. On to Invoker. I, mean, I have zero idea why they globaled there. They I don't know either, yeah. The track came out, so he wasn't going to ghost walk away. There, were, there was no skill in he could have used there. Response from the team is pretty much it, I'm sure. Just simply, they wanted that kill, and they did not want anything to stop them from getting it. So, yeah, obviously, as we saw, completely unnecessary, but... This really is what's going to sure. be a little bit scary here. If you're DC, you have to push towers very tactically. They didn't. They had four heroes bottom. They didn't tunnel all four of them into the building. They realized NP was close to mid. They're going to take towers a lot faster than us, and they kind of did a pelvis the split. Left two bottom, sent a couple towards mid, and once they showed, it did back them up. But NP just ran into the pit and took Roche. <laughs> a very timely DD for Troll. Yeah, that, that's uh, explanation-wise. It uh, maybe happened pretty quickly right there. Battle Trance going to go as well. Not going to use it, though. Easy tower kills. It was low enough, of course. Eternal Levy now joining the team. He's ghost walking in, trying to get the jump on somebody. Perhaps Lone Druid, that would be the prime target, of course. But he's uh, walking away a little too quickly. And I think he'll end up surviving for now, although he's not done just yet. He's going to hang around here in the middle lane. And they want Lone Druid. Yeah, he sees Silencer, but... Okay, he gets caught with the Centaur. Throwing the Centaur in is just one of the funnier things in Dota. Because you, okay. you can start the War Stomp as it's coming down in the air a little bit and, and cut just a little bit off that cast time. So able to hit the stomp on Soxa, he does fall. And this is what I mean, NP can't, or DC cannot race NP's lineup here. They have to just realize they lost T2, they're not going to get the bottom T2 and back up. And they do, they start to fall back as Rose just starts throwing in objects. Don't force them away. What do we think about Quap's decision, by the way, to go this Orchid right here as he just finished? I think this is kind of becoming more standard. It's a very aggressive. It does a lot of right-click damage. It gives you really good mana regen, and it makes so you can pretty much give one target almost for sure. The Amplify damage that comes with the Silence on Orchid, 30% is a ton. So if you just Orchid someone, shotgun your whole combo in, you just added, after the Magic Resist, 22-ish percent to it. So... Huge damage item for him. Yeah. The risk in this is you committed a lot of gold to this, and it didn't make you any tankier. So if he does get caught, he's worth a lot of gold, and he doesn't live very long. Fair point, yeah. So it's a definitely an, an aggressive item, but perhaps that's kind of the answer of what they need right now, and we'll see if it does come into play. And they're smoked up here at the bottom lane, trying to maybe bait somebody out. Nobody here just yet, but if they maybe start pushing it, perhaps could get a response out of, of NP. And that's where the jump could come into play. However, the top lane... That's where NP is at currently. SNY, Sanjin Yasha finished, by the way, for Troll Warlord. So, the SNY decision here. And they are just going to push the secondary tower, but they're not going to get this up as expected. Bounty Hunter in the front lines. Ghost walk in the frame. Eternal Levy. They're going to see him though with a sentry. Out comes the Cross of Haze. The follow-up Sonic Wave. Yes, it's going to be used. And down goes Invoker. The Global Silence, meanwhile, preventing the Primal Split. And he's even going to be feared at the last second. 
as well. So a great response there from DC. Now running away. They did lose Bounty Hunter, but definitely an exchange I'll take. Silencer, though, picked up in the background. So Rose playing with his toy back there and ends up killing it in the process. Moo Meander. He's still trying to juke and jive out of here. Does have a blink in one second. He'll be able to get it off. And I think that should be the end of this chase. So it, numbers wise, it does end up working for NP, but they did lose Invoker. Yeah, roughly equivalent overall. You're not going to be too happy if you're either team there. Now, the one huge saving grace. Oh, they're going on again here. Oh, man. Is this is the kill? Orchid paying off. Yeah, they're going to get the kill, use the Aegis, and they'll be very satisfied with that. Yeah, timing on the Aegis was running a little bit low. It had already been over four minutes, so it only had about 50 seconds left. Uh, but yeah, it is it is good to get that out of there and know you're okay now to take a fight if one does come up. But DC was so close to losing that fight very badly. Lone Druid hit a Primal Roar right as Brew tried to split. And it made him run so far away, not get the split off, which would have given them a guaranteed one more kill, if not two. Such timing. Yeah, I caught that in the process. And yeah, he ran the other direction, as you would hope for. And obviously not much you can do after that fact, so... Good response again from DC in the long run, picking off Invoker. Losing a couple casualties, but now you have Lone Druid with a Mjolnir finish, and he is level 16, so plus 65 damage talent has been picked up, of course. He got that Mjolnir fast. He wasn't even a Maelstrom a couple minutes ago. They took a couple towers, he got a kill, and all of a sudden he's there. It looks like he is going to finish the Dragonlance off into a full Hurricane Pike. Just so many melee heroes on NP that want to be in your face between Brewmaster, Tiny, and then Troll trying to bash you, so... Good pick up there from him, and then, you know, you're getting to the point where you got to make that choice. Do you go Scotty first, or do you go MKB first? So as soon as we see this come out, I think that's going to be the next Radiant split he has to decide. And we're going to see the, the tower race here. Yeah, NP, Invoker at least leading the way at the top lane. Not going to go for it, though. Owie. I mean, you're missing Owie. That's a lot of your damage. That's true. And their secondary is being pushed in, so Radiant's NP is going to... Possibly have to fall back. I mean, already one port back. Looks like the rest are for now. Continuing to push that top lane, but they will lose the middle secondary. And the top secondary, uh, they're going to need to kill it quickly. TP's coming in, not going to happen. So, yeah, they're going to start falling back, and that will be the end. Definitely working out for DC pretty well as far as that bit of a tower race. But, yeah, as you mentioned, not having Troll Warlord there. Don't know what the, the communication was on that, but he uh, was pushing out bottom instead. Yeah, it was just unfortunate. They had been working on that top for so long that when Troll came back and like reset the wave out bottom, it was just too far for him to go run. So they do get the top tower, but it does get denied. So a little bit of gold loss there, but at least they get the map advantage from it. DC's just so scary right now. Lone Druid hit his level 15 damage spike. This is arguably the strongest point in the game for this hero. He does an absurd amount of damage that you're just not expecting. Well, now you might be because he's gotten a little more meta, but... It's, it's just scary to fight into that lineup right now. Mm -hmm. You've got Moon Meander's Blink Force, so he's extremely attack. mobile. Quap still has Dyer's that Orchid, and then there's still Global to worry about. Every time I see this Lone Jury just sitting this far away, just pounding into a tower, it just, just a chuckle a little bit. It just seems absurd, but that's what he's doing. Fortification comes out, though. And we'll see if NP can stop this. I mean, they're moving in as if they may want to try, but again, the tower's just taking too much damage. Grenado comes out. We'll stall it. For now, but it is going to fall. Lundgren finishes the job, and they will start falling back. However, pursuit happening. Owie trying to catch somebody. Sentry's down. That was going to be jumped himself. No follow-up, though. Mumiander went in, flies across the phase. Going to fall back, however. DC playing it pretty safe from their perspective. They're going to try to kill the Shrine in the process and be satisfied with that. So both, they're, they're kind of playing a game of chicken right now. Yeah, they really are. Both teams are very scared to initiate. NP's trying to kind of soft initiate and try to bait out the global, because if they can get that gone, then brew split actually becomes a skill, and they can look to take a fight. But until that's down, it's really hard for them to go all in. If brew goes in or gets thrown in and then can't split, he's in a really, really bad spot. Mm -hmm. You see Misery right there. He drew the lines at the top lane. Early now, he's the bottom lane. Quap, by the way, middle lane. Can he look at time? No, he cannot. The second lockdown came in. They end up dropping him throughout, so there's that little bit squishier of a Queen of Pain as you're talking about. So Does have the point booster on the way to the Ags at least, but still not enough to save him. As Extremely saw. timely, skilled 10% RNG there, getting that bash off on Troll. Yeah. So. Nicely done, though. They do pick him off. That's going to slow him down a lot. He's Quap is still not at Ags, and they need to get this up so they can start clearing waves a little more efficiently. 
Right now their wave clear is all around pretty bad. Your Lone Druid can do it okay with Mjolnir, but Slardar is very slow at clearing out waves. Bounty and Silencer are no help there. So you want that Quap Bag so she can start pushing out side lanes a little more aggressively, letting you jockey for better positioning, and, and really just giving you the, the edge on map control. I feel like this is what EE loves to do. You get those drums early on. Now he's got the, the Yules, and now he's going to be building into that Axe here. Uh, coming up next as they will push in that bottom tower. But I am looking at EE's drum charges. Unless he bought a new pattern, he actually hasn't used any yet. Yeah, he hasn't. Drums. They really just haven't had a lot of use for them yet. They want to use them after brew split when they're trying to chase people down at the, the end of a fight as DC's running away. Uh, just to give them that extra movement speed and that extra catch. In hindsight, does that make it a pretty poor item choice that he went? Or is it still going to be useful? I mean, they still have has the charges for later on, I guess you can argue. Yeah, and there's there's just other benefits to it, too. If he would have found any picks with Ghostwalk here, he could have cold snap drums and alacrity himself just to do a ton of damage really fast. But he just hasn't found those options. They've kind of been on the back foot for a while, playing this, as I said, this little game of chicken with the towers. And DC definitely came out ahead in this, so... Now they're trying to reset, they're trying to figure out how they can get up this hill or if they should go from the bottom. But they're a team that want to just be at your buildings. They want to be right clicking them. Even if they only get two or three seconds, they can take down half of a tower. So it's going to be a fight like this all game for map control and, and both teams a little scared to be the ones to go in. Roshan respawning in just over 30 seconds as we saw right there. So of course, as you had to figure in a game like this where it's definitely an even one. In fact, the charts pretty much reflect that as well. Near even on net worth. Not a 2,500 experience lead uh, in favor of NP, but yeah, overall very, very even. Ooh, right here, Slaughter. Four staffs away before getting caught himself. And again, DC playing it very, very safe. Just so much on the line, this being a best of one. Winner goes to Shanghai, loser is done here in the Starlighter I League Star Series American Region Qualifiers. And Roshan, he's going to be popping up any second now. And NP feels they're aware of it. There we go. The pings come out. Now what do we do is the question. Just play around the pit for now and wait for that opening is I'm guessing the name of the game here for these two teams. By the way, there is a gem on Slaughter. Yeah, both teams fight into a team in the pit extremely well. Sonic Wave and Slaughter Crush are both just amazing at going on people on Roshan. And same thing, honestly, with Invoker and Tiny and, and pretty much everybody on, on NP's roster wants to just throw spells into the pit. But neither of the teams want to be the ones down there in the low ground without vision. They're going to feel very vulnerable. The one benefit NP has, though, is they will shred it. So if DC ever posts up bottom is three or four, that Roche is just going to be gone. BKB for uh, Troll Warlord. He's working on it, at least. He's almost there, and I'm guessing they definitely want that on him before a fight would break out, of course. Pretty key item. Axe has been finished on Quap. Looks like four staff in the work for Bounty Hunter, so kind of just going through and seeing any perhaps uh, big items that is coming along. Uh, who else is getting a... Well, somebody else is getting a BKB, but... Brewmaster, I think he changed his mind. I think he was for a second, but... Yeah. I was going Lotus Orb here. Yep. Same kind of idea for him, in all honesty. He's just looking for a way to get rid of the global. Um, I'm a bit surprised with Aoi Sanjinyasha choice, though, looking back at it with his decision now to go BKB. Because if you go BKB, you can use it after global and get rid of global. Mm -hmm. But if you use it before, you will get global. Same thing with Root from LB. If you use it before a root, then you're possibly rooted. If you use it during one, it breaks it. Manta does the exact same interaction. So I'm surprised he didn't go Manta instead of SNY, just to get him out of an untimely root if he had already BKB'd. Because otherwise, he's just kind of a sitting duck there for, for Misery and Weehaw, or um, Resolution and Weehaw, just to poke at. That's actually a very fair point, I feel. Yeah, that's interesting uh, logic right there. Now, at the same time, you know, BKB, it's not necessarily only going to be for getting out of crowd control, there is the aspect of the mitigating the damage part of it, so, you know, Quap dealing plenty of magic damage herself. Yep. So perhaps that's the ultimate logic used in that, and that's why he wants it. Definitely an argument, though, to be made. Yeah, there's definitely situational uses for the BKB, for sure. Quap does do a lot of magic damage. Sonic Wave does burst BKB, though, so that is uh, a little bit terrifying, and you're going to have to remember that that burst does come through. But DC jockeying up for Roshan right now. They haven't seen that NP's all bottom, but they seem to have an idea. SVG, kind of up front, scouting it out, wants to finish that Axe himself, but from the looks of it, it's still eh, actually getting pretty close, about 900 gold away before he'll be able to have that. Of course, that will ideally help with vision, but 
For now, yeah, DC controlling the Roshan pit, and now they're pinging it pretty heavily. They're going to start initiating, so Digital Chaos, confident that this could be the play. They won't get there in time. That's gone. God, that Corrosive Haze just amps so much damage, and Resolution especially taking advantage of it. There you go. Yeah, you're right. Sarter actually bought himself a gem very early on. We don't usually yeah. see offlaners do this. We usually see your five roll play welfare and scrape together 900 gold to buy it. But committing 900 of his own gold on Sardar to purchase that early gem, that did help them out. It got rid of a couple wards around the rush pit, which really did just help them take that for free. DC or NP didn't even make an attempt to contest it. And now the Sages, uh, they did pick it up for Lone Druid. Does that make sense to you, that over the Quap here? Yeah, I think Quap's still just looking to shotgun all her spells at this point, and then if yeah. she dies, it's not the end of the world. But Lone Druid is a consistent source of damage, and he's your tower hitter. So you can post him up on the tower, way in front of the rest of the team, just start chipping away at it. And if he does happen to get gone on, they probably committed an ult or two, and, you know, then you have Aegis. Come yeah, but here. if he doesn't have the agency to kill him, he's back up in 20 seconds anyways, so right? So, But your push is over. <laughs> yeah, I know. Uh, yeah. That's the unfortunate problem. But yeah, that 50-second respawn reduction, what a hero, man. What a, what a hero. hero. What a hero. Um, by the way, he is going that Aya Scotty, so there's that answer. Not going to be getting the MKB, perhaps. You talk about all the missed chance coming out on the side of, from NP here. And knowing this, if, if I see any indication of it, yeah, like... As soon as he buys one of the pieces of this, if I'm Maui, I go blink next. And I just look to be on top of him, basically, the, the rest of the game. You just blink in, you can Shadow Blade the move afterwards if you need to. But you just blink in, ult BKB, and just start smashing him. You gotta say, this is this is proven to be a pretty tense game, or not only tense, but pretty passive game here, I hear, between these two teams. As, uh, again, what is on the line, being a best out of one, I guess you can uh, suggest, but... Uh, is he really pushing middle by himself? He, he definitely is right here. I mean, Spirit Bear going to be picked off, actually. Well, they kind of have this gem on Moon giving them some confidence. They're just invisible on the map right now. We see there's only the one Radiant Ward left, and it's a little difficult to D-Ward, but Moon may get to it at some point. And uh, looks like he is. He's pinging it out. Yep. So Radiant is now totally in the dark. They have no clue where DC is if they're not pushing out any waves. So... If, if they just let we push these waves out with ult or let resolution shove them with that Mjolnir, they have no clue where the rest of the pack is. Yeah. So NP's pinned in their base. Not good. Yeah, you see their vision. Basically nothing as you're talking about. And DC now, they're making their way towards Misery. He's getting up there. I thought about placing a, a ward, but he's going to sit on the outskirts. Bottom lane. Oh, he's going to be jumping Quab. The Sunstrike even coming up. Hope for the bash, but Rose runs right into it. Four step forward, though. And Brewmaster does it with the Thundercloud. Thunder Wee's going to be able to play away in time as the Global Size now comes out in response. He Lotus Orbs himself. He takes a fear, though. There comes the Primal Split from Brewmaster, finally. Meanwhile, they do at least pick off Misery on that Bounty Hunter. And there's that poor man's uh, Blink Dagger once again on the Aoi. Going to tear down the Spear Bear. And he should actually stay dead. Slaughter also getting picked off in the middle lane. And NP is able to chase them out right here. A two for nothing. I guess kind of two and a half. You got the Spirit Bear, which is on cooldown now for 40 seconds. Yeah, huge play from Rose here. Coming in and getting a secondary initiation to, to get them something in this fight. Uh, it was a nice little play there from Aoi to start pressuring, but Quap was going to blink away unless he hit God Mode on the Bashes. So, really huge play turned into a huge team fight. MSS getting an ult off finally, and we saw the power of that when... DC's running away. Like, running away from Brulings is terrifying. One of you is going to go in the air, one of you is going to get a rock thrown at you, and it's dangerous after that point. Now it makes it to the top lane now, but now you see the double gem on the Coddle, by the way. He actually dropped one off here, but um, of course, uh, they killed Slaughter, who had that gem, as we were mentioning earlier. Now, going to be without one here. So, definitely, that's another key for NP as far as coming out on top of that fight. Yeah, NP's got to make the waves get shoved out here so they have some room. Once they have some room to move around the map, they can go reclaim vision again, start de-warding and planting some of their own. And once they have eyes again, then they look for an aggressive smoke. If they can find one or two pickoffs, then they can instantly take a building and, you know, maybe even a Rax if it's Weeha or, or Resolution. Grouping up top lane is DC. Again, I, Scotty has been finished on Lone Druid. Another 1,600 gold saved up right here. MSS pushing out the middle lane in the meantime. Working on his own eggs now. That'll well, be fun to see from him. And Voker has been doing this quite often. Eternal Envy playing very aggressive with this Ghostwalk. They're going to see him, though. 
Yeah, they're picking him out. Track goes up. Now he realizes oh, no. he might be in trouble. Out comes the crush from Slaughter. The follow-up damage. Yield Scepter in the air. He does have team support kind of nearby. Rose going to assist. Blinding light in the background. Misses coming out. Out 2000 misses it as well. Sonic Wave going to be used. Not enough damage just yet. He's going to escape for the time being. And now back up here. Oh, he will take down Wii with the bash proc. He just tears him a new one right there. They did pick off Eternal Emmy in the background, by the way. And now Lundrid from a distance pounding in the auto attacks. Global Silence coming out. It's a four versus four right now. Make it a four versus three as they pick off Tiny. However, Brewmaster in the background coming back together. The Slaughter Crush misses. And as a result, he will be able to make his way out of there with the TP. Cottle is caught, though, and ultimately a three-for-one exchange. Only Quap going down for DC. Very huge fight, and that went exactly the way DC wanted. It was very scattered, but DC was on the offensive. They were running towards them. That mitigates a lot of what the Brew can do, and it, it really put NP on the back foot. Envy getting caught there was just disastrous. He lived way longer than I thought he was going to, Yeah, but... You just can't get caught like that. He made a very aggressive play and didn't quite have the team in position to back him up. Now, actually, Bounty Hunter going to find Owie right here. This could be an absolutely huge kill if they can manage. Crush comes out. Not enough follow-up damage, though, I think is the key. And, in fact, Owie's like, you know what? Come at me, bro. And try to He's fight him off right long, there. Though. Are you right? Yeah, Lotus Orb Purge, and he'll be good. <laughs> Did have the armor from the Ogre Frost Mage as well that was assisting, mitigating that damage right there. But yeah, maybe, maybe staying a little too long for comfort. If there. we had gotten there, that gets a little bit, a little more dangerous. There's a level two Sonic Wave coming at you. Basically, a, about a thousand burst damage would have flown into his face. But yeah. he does get out safely, so no harm, no foul. Didn't have to burn BKB there too, which is another big thing. If that had been True. forced out, that would have been something for DC at least. But all in all, kind of a zero value trade. Yeah, Silver Edge finished. Is that, uh, oh, how critical is that going to, oh, is it bottom? Wow, yeah, SVG gets picked off down here, and we're not done just yet. BKB pop by Lone Druid, and that range onto Rose, and he gets the kill. Double kill, in fact. Eternal Envy and MSS having to fall back. Moomy enter, trying to go for a chase and four staff forward, but not going to catch. And that will be the end of that right there, but they get two kills. Coddle doesn't have a buyback, but he's up in 25 seconds here. Yeah, very nice BKB from Resolution there, and really he just manned up. He was almost 1v4 for a while, and they just they couldn't bring him down. Without Troll there to hit him, he's, he's not dying. And a fall back with a buyback being Radiant used on Rose. Playing that tiny, so DC again now forcing the issue. And there's the MKB now onto Lone Druid, so eh, why not get both eventually? Yeah, he was eventually going to need it. There's some silver lining here for NP that this giant miss lineup makes it extremely impossible to push uphill if those misses can connect because MKB does not stop missing on buildings. So he still will have a, a huge miss chance if Cottle gets a blinding light on him or you get a whirling axes. And it, it is going to be hard for DC to siege towers without finding a pick. <laughs> Imagine MSS is a tower. He's a dead tower right there. <laughs> he almost wasn't moving because of the MKB anyways. Yeah, that was insane how fast that Brewmaster just dropped. Yep, this is still buyback. Just does an obscene amount of damage. And now Savage Roar is only on a 10 second cooldown too, so. Oh boy. Oh, they're gonna find Coddle actually. And he does not have a buyback as mentioned earlier. In the background, Global Silence user Orchid was on an invoker there. But he'll be able to yield and be fine as he's too far back. Rose jumps in, but Unable to get the initiation that they were looking for. I think he still might have been silenced for a split second there. He did save the gem. That is the one little okay. upshot to that with that blink in. But yeah, his avalanche was still on cooldown from trying to save the cuddle. That blade mill on a quap. Of course, uh, you know, level 25 quap is also a pretty fearful thing. Wii's not necessarily going to be there just yet, though. It's, it's going to take a bit longer. He's still level 18 here, so I guess at this yeah, point. Yeah, I highly doubt he'll see 25 that's before true. this game is over. But, I mean, honestly, Endy's Invoker has been fairly lackluster at this point. Owie's done a lot of damage, he's been in good position in teamfights, but Envy's gotten caught, he's struggled to get off key spells, and now that these BKBs are coming online, he's finding it incredibly difficult to be effective in teamfights right now, too. See Aoi making his way back to base, they're going to join the team, but yeah, Roshan dying, and that's cheese on somebody, right? That's cheese on we, right here on the co-op, so... Octarine Core also just around the corner, too. So once she gets that, that's where things really start to get scary. Uh, from the Quap now, it's, all, it's kind of been the resolution show so far, but 
Yeah, be worried so if about you're the NP, you still have you still have some fragments of vision. You need to try to get a smoke out of the base. You need to try to find an opportunity uh, instead of letting DC post up and make you take a normal team fight. They they need to get tiny onto a support. They need to get Bruce splitting, and they need to cause this disruption that lets Owie just sit on resolution. He's the only one that can do damage to that lone druid. And if you leave the lone druid unattended, you will just lose. Well, easy game plan. Now the execution. That's the tough part. A little bit. Sitting from a distance. There we go. As you're talking about. Look at that tower. <laughs> the tower it doesn't matter. He's just doing so much damage on it. And it's going to be a matter of seconds before it dies. They're going to say, you know what? We'll kill your spirit bear at least. Can't even do that, though. As they're forced off. Going to have to pop that fortification. Tower does barely stay alive. Six life right there. And it's gone. And it's dead. Radiance top tower. So, has easy fallen. tower kill. And yeah, Digital Chaos isn't necessarily uh, too concerned about really trying to finish the game right at this second here. They're going to yeah, keep no, their they're, distance. They're, they're fine to take the slow. They're really not in any hurry. And really, there's nothing on the horizon they're scared of. There's no one or two items NP could get that are really going to change the course of this game. And there's the range racks. Going to be focused on my resolution. Switches down to Rose. Track is up. A couple of auto attacks, it feels like, and he's down to below half life, but he will live as resolution will defensively force staff away. Again, he has that Aegis. He also has the PKB in his backpack currently, but we'll swap that in after he comes back up. Meeting these right here. No, Spirit Bear again getting chugged back in. The Platinum Light and Crush going to miss in the background. Luminate Span coming out. So the Spirit Bear is lost, but again, resolution doesn't really care too much. Just finishing off the racks. And they did lose Rose actually throughout that too. Yeah, he's just a lonely bear at this point, but he's fine with that. And now to the middle lane. So it's yeah. What does MP do? I mean, that, they just well they're losing T3s right now. Owie's banking almost five thousand gold. He's got to figure out what he wants to buy, spend it, and they got to try to commit. And I think it still has to be blink. You go blink, you pop your EKB, you sit on the lunder, and you hope you bashed him to death. Yeah. Like, you don't have options at this point. You don't have time to think slowly, like play tactically, you, you've got to just go. The longer you wait, this resolution is just tearing through your buildings. Slowly dwindling down. Yeah, it doesn't have the Spirit Bear to be that tank anymore, though, so it is stopping things a little bit. And actually, it's enough for the uh, retreat to come out from DC. They're, they're going to recoup, maybe get some more life and mana, even on resolution right here. And Oh, hey, double damage here, and he'll take that, too. And... Uh, <laughs> Make their way back, so nice spawn right there. So Invoker does, uh, Envy does have his Lincolns done if you'd like to purchase it and forego buyback, but I imagine he's going to keep that. But we do see the four-man smoke. Oh my god, they're going to run right into Moomy and her crush comes out. BKB's not used on the big Sonic Wave out of three. Brewmaster dead before he knows it. 60 seconds, no buyback. Oh, though, sitting on top of resolution, but that double damage. Remember, you do not want to fight this if you're MP. They realize that they're trying to retreat the best they can, at least Troll Warlord is. But Invoker's caught, and Orca comes out and down goes Invoker. It's a three for nothing, a triple kill for resolution. It's going to be four kills. As Coddle will definitely go down here as well. Socks up finishing the job there. Invoker buys back. They're going to be on their last leg right now. That is not the fight they wanted to take, man. Yeah, and he just wasn't there. He was pushing mid-wave out still. He wasn't in position to help them. If he had been able to tornado right away, he could have removed the DD from resolution. Maybe, maybe given Owie a chance to man up on him. That's all of a sudden another set of racks, and the game's not 100% over, but it's looking just about there at this point. DC going to make their way to the middle lane and maybe try to finish it the old-fashioned way of going right for the tier fours after this. They take out the melee racks. There's the performance Blink Dagger again. Now he goes in. They had the last chance resolution. Take us a good damage. He may fall, but guess what? He has an Aegis. That means he's coming right back up. Sonic Wave. Going to connect right there, and Troll Warlord falling back. MSS in the midst of it, finally gets out the primal split, and trying to lock down Resolution now. Again, if they kill him right here, there's some hope perhaps. BKB pop, though, and he's just simply run, 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 baby. While his teammate's doing work in the background, we he jumps in, another Orchid onto Invoker. The Blade Mail goes up. you got to be careful. That life's still kicking in, and he'll survive. Slaughter, meanwhile, though, the Alacrity from Invoker. Enough damage to go through and get the kill on him. And now Wee's locked down as well in the background. And they do catch Resolution. It does fall. And we will get the kill on himself on the Shrill Warlord and blinks away at the last second. So there's buybacks on everybody currently. Silencer may fall victim in the very end. So at least NP will push out. They have to defend their base. True. <laughs> there's a lot of super creeps pounding in right now. So they're not going to get anything off of this. And it's only a range track left, so chip damage, like this one creep hitting it right now, it's very important. Uh, <laughs> tier 4 tower, guys, get back. 
<laughs> yeah, the Those socks do regen, so they're a little bit less priority to stop. But there was a melee creep hitting that range barracks, and it got about 300 HP off of it. So, extremely bad for them. Um, if you're DC, you can just chuck bodies at it now. You make sure you all have a buyback. You just put LD on it for about five hits, and it'll fall over. And then the game gets tenfold harder. <laughs> Absolutely ridiculous. Yeah, Soxel living as long as he did on that silencer definitely helping allow the creeps to even do that much more damage in the base right there. So the, the range racks, the soul survivor here, preventing the mega creeps at least. But let's be honest, I mean, that's just <laughs> preventing the inevitable, it almost feels like, for NP right now. I hate to count them out 100% and not, not doing that necessarily, but man, are they going to need some kind of miracle. And unfortunately, he plays for Team Liquid. So now Troll Warlord, though, up in five seconds. Um, so at least he'll be able to help push out, but blade mail choice on tiny. I guess yeah, that's actually a decent item at this point. <laughs> An item that try to grab and maybe catch DC uh, a sleeping. Full Scotty too. He's for going by back here for this one last team fight. He's uh, basically all inning with his item choice, and he he did well last fight. He finally just ran at them. He didn't worry about his own life. He just that, trusted yeah. he was gonna bash. And I mean that was the the first fight they've won in 20 minutes. Yeah, maybe just realizing that a little too late, unfortunately. And here comes that, uh, what you figure to be the final push of the game. You look at <laughs> uh, Misery drawing out the line's bottom in the top lanes, just saying, you know what, guys, we don't need to force this. Let the creeps do their job, and we'll, uh, we'll eventually get our opportunity right here. But we are in no rush once again as we keep going back to yeah, the Aya Scotty on Troll Warlord, as you talked about. Yeah, this fortifies up for Radiant. There's no reason just to like run in and overcommit on this, but they could just sit back and wait for Roche too. There's very little way that NP is going to make it out of their base at this point for the remainder of this game, barring like a double five wipe. Mm -hmm. So DC is totally content just to sit back on their heels and wait for NP to make a mistake. Here we go. Crush comes out. They got Troll. He forced half to wait though, and there's a Lotus Orb, so he will be fine. I had to play pretty. Panicked there for a split second. Again, he doesn't have a buyback. All in on that ice, Scotty. Save the range rack. Spear prickles and a big three-man crush up from Moomin to start things out. Maybe a two-man. Anyways, they get the chop down. There's the range racks. Mega Creep's not going to spawn. Sonic Wave in the background. BKB targets, but still doing some damage. And really zoning them out. Brewmaster picked off. Tiny already dead. Coddle's going to fall. Troy Warlord's going to fall. Maybe. Nope, Shadow Blade. He'll be fine. Or Silver Edge even, but... Goes back to the well, and that should all but do it, though. I'm expecting GG's to be coming out here. Because DC, yeah. they're going to be going uh, to Shanghai once again, representing America. Yep, looks like there will be very, very clean game from them outside of the first 15 minutes of it. Uh, there was that one team fight mid where we just was at the shrine and Moon overextended a little bit. But other than that, very, very clean game out of them. 41,000 net worth on Lone Druid. That is an insanely high number to see. And <laughs> there we go, and it is official. GG, well played. Again, Digital Chaos. They're representing America here in the Star Ladder I League Star Series Tournament. And that's got a sting if you're NP. They not only, you know, they, they went with a fairly unique draft, it's fair to say. The Brewmaster, the Support Tiny, a Troll Warlord Core. This is not your typical lineup. And it definitely had its its reasoning and logic behind it the more the game played out and you're kind of, you know, looking at it. But... Um, they, they try to go a little fancy here, and uh, it, it, it just did not work against DC. DC was ready to handle it, and Lone Druid, he's still powerful. Yes, he is definitely a pick they may regret giving away, and they just fell a little too far behind, and DC got to play pretty standard ABC Dota with a front line, a mid line, and a back line, and yep, clean game from them, and they'll be going to Shanghai. Got to sting a little bit for NP in a couple of cases, uh, like I said, not only with the draft, but also the fact that they, they controlled their own destiny. They, they are mm -hmm. the ones that controlled their own destiny yesterday going up against Complexity. They won the first game. All they needed to do was win that second game, and Complexity played the spoils. They defeated NP, forced this tiebreaker matchup in the first place, and now here we are, DC winning, and thus again going on. So, DC, you're going to send those thank you letters to Complexity or, you know, maybe uh, – some hugs or whatever, but uh, they, they definitely have them to thank as well as obviously taking care of business here and uh, getting the job done. So that means that we're gonna be we're gonna be done though here on the broadcast. So pretty quick one at that. It, you know, obviously a pretty good game as we hoped for, uh, but uh, it's it is, does feel a little odd the fact that it ended up only being a best of one. But again, that's what was decided, and uh, thus DC moving on. So 
Z-Rock, obviously I want to thank you once again for, for joining me here on the broadcast. Any shout-outs, anything you want to say? No, no, I just uh, shout-out to Whiskey. I uh, promised that was going to happen sometime tonight. But other than that, no, I believe that is the end of this tournament, unfortunately. A bit of an odd format. I. Other than that, it was a fun tournament, a lot of good games. Yeah, no, it was. Yeah, the format, it did allow, it made it, unfortunately, some of the later matches, you know, weren't as significant. But, you know, overall, we it's safe to say we got, you know, a worthy team. I mean, that that's kind of the ultimate idea of these qualifiers is you get a worthy team to send, and by all means, Digital Chaos is a very worthy team. So, um, as far as wrapping things up officially, guys, uh, once again, I'm Breaky CPK. Um, and you can find me on Twitter and Facebook at BreakingCBK and my Twitch channel as well. Uh, definitely been enjoying casting this event as well as Dota 2 in general lately. Hopefully you guys have been enjoying it, and hopefully there's there's more to come. As uh, a big shout out to BTS and Starladder. With that said, for having uh, myself on for a bit of this broadcasting throughout the group stages and now in this awesome tiebreaker matchup here, but. Again, guys, that's officially going to do it. So have a good night. We'll see you next time on the broadcast, which uh, I guess at this point will be the main event, which is set to take place later on this month, if I'm not mistaken. Be sure to look out for all that information and the main event coming. So until then, guys, have a good night. Until then, congratulations again to Digital Chaos.